So I'm here in Topaz Gigapixel version 7.0.4 and I'm just looking to upscale this image of a butterfly which looks like a photo but it was actually um, created in Flux AI although it's super photographic and high quality to start with so this should be an easy one. Right so I'm going to go over to my resize mode on the right hand side start from the top going down as usual and I'm going to I'm actually going to click on the crop button here because I want to give this a little bit of a a little bit of a crop this is all subjective but just to show you how the tool works you can give things a little bit of a crop prior to the upscale so it saves you having to go into other software first to apply things like a little basic crop so there we go I'm just going to reset my view to 100% zoom because it keeps defaulting back when you change views which is annoying so now I've cropped the image a little bit more I'm going to go down to the scale here and choose my upscale factor and for this, I'm going to do a four times upscale. And I'm just going to look at the image. And as you can see, I'm in the full screen preview mode, which means that um, it updates to the before and after when I click and hold the mouse button down. And then it shows you temporarily the before image. And when you drag it around and when you let go, it shows you the image that's been processed with Topaz Gigapixel. And you can see there's quite a big difference already between the like the blocky low res original when I let go everything looks a lot more crisp and refined and obviously we're gonna we're gonna tweak that further now so let's get to a nice view where we can see some good details on the butterfly so when it comes to the AI model I don't like using the automatic um, choice which is this toggle here it just lets the program choose which are the best settings for you or and what it believes I often find that it doesn't agree with me, so I t tend to choose my own. And when it comes to a photographic image like this, I normally choose between standard V2 and high fidelity V2 um, in this particular version of Gigapixel. Um, I would deviate from this if it wasn't photographic, it was a different style of image, and or it was notably a bad quality starting point. But as this was a good quality starting point, there's no need to venture to these other modes. So I'm looking at the fur on the butterfly's back here. There's some like some soft fuzzy sort of strands of fur there. And I'm just clicking between standard V2. And it looks nice, but it almost looks a little bit out of focus to me. But if I click on high fidelity V2 and give it a second to update, it looks like it's kept the structure a lot more intact. And this is what I find about the high fidelity V2 model is it's really good at preserving the texture um, especially fine details and texture that were in original. So I think, yeah, I'm quite happy that's what I'm going to go with. But I'm going to change the preview mode to sort of side by side of before and after, and I'm going to zoom out a little bit just so um, just so we can get a bit more context into the view for some of the settings. I like to do this when I move on to the settings section. Now again, you can click this to let it choose for you. You can click the little lightning bolt button, but um, I'd like to use my own judgment. So minor denoise, it's a case of looking on the before image, going, does the image have any unrequired or excessive noise? A little bit of noise or grain is always useful. It ties together gradients and it gives the image a bit more believability. And I could see a tiny amount of grain in the original image that was just part of the original generation, but really like just, just appropriate and nice. And I wouldn't want to get rid of that. In fact, just the upscaling process itself has unfortunately got a little rid of a little bit of that grain, um, which we could add add back in Photoshop or something like that. No problem. So I certainly wouldn't want to denoise this any more than it is on this particular example. De-blur, it's basically a sharpening. So again, use your judgment. Does it look? And it's good to go to 100% um, zoom level for this. On the fine detail areas or the wings and things like that, does it look sharp enough? And bearing in mind, it does get sharpened up by the upscaling process. So maybe you can go a little bit. I would say a little goes a long way, even though on the photo AI software, there is a lot more aggressive sharpening and other tools like that. For good quality images like this, that's probably all you need. So that's nice. Fixed compression. Again, look around the original image. Look, look at the before image. Do you see obvious compression artifacts like JPEG compression artifacts or anything? If the answer is no, then don't switch the slider. Because if you just start to arbitrarily change these sliders when there's nothing there to fix, it can be at the detriment of the image itself and it can make it start to go soft and blurry. So I'm not seeing any in the original 
or anything that is obvious to me or annoying me you might see some on the screen just because of YouTube's compress compression algorithms when you're watching this video. But as I'm looking at the sort of the raw image on my monitor, as it were, um, I'm not seeing any obvious compression artifacts. So I'm going to leave that too. Face recovery and gamma correction are not relevant. And um, there is my final upscaled image.